the old Harbours Board building looking towards the number one dock and we're standing outside what used to be the Port Dock Railway Station the front section has been demolished and replaced with its commercial buildings this is the site of the original Port Dock Railway Station and in times past steam trains used to go down this street and there are even th used to be three railway lines running down the street to a bridge across the upper arm of the Port River a place near Port Misery which was the original name for Port Adelaide because the area was a much lower level than it is now and all the land we're standing upon is uh, reclaimed land raised up by about two metres modern Port Adelaide, the back of the what was the Port Dock Marshalling Yards and that one <coughs> nice building and looking towards the Rail Viaduct which was built in 1910 the Viaduct by Port Road Road looking towards the Black Diamond Corner at the intersection. This is the lot route which was taken by the Alba Park, what was a, or originally meant to be a steam tram running down the middle of the street, but because the private company had problems with their steam engines, they had to revert to horse tram. The gauge of this tram was different to all the other tram private tramway companies in Adelaide in that it was a broad gauge so they could share the same tracks as the government railway. In 1910 this viaduct was built and the railway station was constructed. At the same time the private railway private tram companies had been nationalised and the government of South Australia through its Metropolitan Tramways Trust which had created electrified many of the tram lines including this tram line which was extended to Rosewater by going further along here to the junction of Grand Junction Road and ran along Grand Junction Road to Rosewater it also went out in the direction here to Largs Bay and Semaphore. At one time Semaphore had both government trams, electric trams and government steam trains running to Semaphore. Junction Road, Port Road. Looking back towards Port Adelaide. This is the route for the Albert Park uh, tram and at this point the Rosewater tram turned and went along Grand Junction Road towards Rosewater. And we're now looking at Red Hill which goes over the top of the What's now the old form commuter line? This is a, was a major bus terminus and storage site for buses. Quiet time here at Port Adelaide at the moment. We're now standing on the Red Hill Road Bridge as it is now, it used to also be for trams in the past. Looking at the railway line as it exists now. When I was young, 12 years of age, 
this factory didn't exist and the railway lines used to run straight through making the trains to the Port Dock station so this is actually the route Port Dock train which was the first railway government owned railway in the British Commonwealth from Adelaide to Port Dock later this line up was built to take trains to the Outer Harbour avoiding using the main streets of Port Adelaide and at a point just there there was a junction where the down train from the city and the up train from Osborne crossed over and when I was 12 years of age my parents were driving on this bridge and I looked out the window and saw the train from Semaphore collide with the train from the city at this point and the train, the same train, was carried on in another of steam and all the people came to see what happened and one university student was killed in the accident. I understand that the port dock station is being resurrected presumably using this track which at the moment is locked off behind locked gates. This is a diagram of the rubber lines which existed at Rosewater at an earlier time. In 1856 a single track rubber line was built from Adelaide North Terrace to the port of Adelaide near Dock 1 and was called the Port Dock Station. Later that line was duplicated. Business later caused a railway line to be built which went from here to Semaphore and later to a place called Outer Harbour. In the early 1900s there was so much traffic wanting to go to this part of Adelaide around Semaphore because ships coming into Adelaide would often let their passengers get off onto lighters and come ashore at Semaphore Jetty that the railway line which went to Semaphore Jetty was re-diverted via a viaduct over Commercial Road and so this is the viaduct the down track and the up track and the viaduct finishes this point here just here a railway overpass, so a road overpass was built on Grand Junction Road so that the level crossing which would have existed there from 1856 was replaced by a road bridge. In 1955 or thereabouts when I was about 12 years of age I was actually a passenger on the car on this rail bri road bridge looking out the window in this direction when I saw the down train, the steam train which got under the bridge racing through at high speed and basically running the red light to get to the Pork Dock station at the same time as a train from Semaphore or thereabouts was coming down and I actually witnessed this train hit that train in about the second or third carriage. There was a great storm of steam and noise and blasts and so on and people came running and one person was killed. So obviously Junctions like this have got a problem. The solution is to develop a flying junction. So this is the original diagram showing how the lines cross over. 
and the solution is you create a bridge so that this down train can cross over the up train. The extreme example of flying junction is here in Europe where at 300 kilometers an hour the various intercity expresses and uh, other high-speed trains in Europe can go from Paris to London or London to Brussels or Brussels to Paris without any possibility of collision. The interesting thing is in France because it adopted trains very early the trains in France and Britain both run on the left hand side so there's no problems occurring with that. An interesting one is when you're going from Denmark to Sweden there's a flying junction because the trains in Europe, the rest of Europe, Germany and uh, so on, travel on the right hand side whereas in Sweden they travel on the left hand side the trains going across from Copenhagen to Malmo have a flying junction where the train swaps sides from one side to the other. So flying junctions are a way where high speed trains can travel with safety and without any possibility of delay and no possibility of collisions. Another use of flying junctions is to bring the passengers together in a place where they can sh change trains easily. This is a diagram of Town Hall Station in Sydney, Australia. And here we have the down shore train, North Shore, going through to North Shore, and the up shore train. And what they're doing here is the down lines are being brought here as a flying junction so that passengers from the city can swap over to the eastern suburbs. So this, on this platform we have city outer and eastern suburbs trains where the passengers can swap over and similarly here we have passengers from the city on this platform can swap over to the shore trains. So this is a way in which passengers can, at an interchange station can move from one side of the platform to the other so that they don't have to walk long distances underground. This is actually showing a diagram of the railway lines underneath Sydney. This is the, a diagram of the railway lines underneath central Sydney. This is where the trains are at ground level and, and at service level and then they go underground. So we have the North Shore line, North Northern Beaches line becoming the southern suburbs line. The eastern suburbs line becomes the western suburbs line and so on. So this is showing the town hall station where there's an interchange so that people and the, the, this line represents both an up and down track. So the, there's actually at this point there's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen tracks on the seven lines which are shown in this diagram. It's not all of the tracks which occur at Central, but it is the ones we're looking at at the moment. We can see that trains going from Central to Town Hall go in a number of different directions. So Winyard, and so we've got a kind of loop arrangement. And people can change trains at these places by the fact that they use passing loops to be able to get from one platform to another easily. 
This diagram shows the flying loops which actually occur at Central Railway Station in Sydney. So we, we see at this point we're up to platform number 25. So there are another 15 platforms which are not on this diagram. And this is the direction from to and from the city and this is the direction from Redbird section. And you can see that there's a whole series of train lines which go over or under one another and through here. So in this section of Central Railway Station there are actually two levels of flying loops, flying junctions, where trains can move from one position to another and the number of chances of trains having to wait at, inter at junctions are minimised because the system consists of a number of two, at least two or three layers of tracks. The English, in the early times of trains, this actually is Piccadilly Circus. And we can see that beneath Piccadilly Circus, there are a whole series of flying junctions where trains can move straight through without any possibility of collisions. In Sydney, the trains are around, around about two minute headway, three minute headway. Similarly, in the central London, the trains are at two minute headways in the busy times, which would be impossible if you had normal junctions where trains had to wait. And this is showing underneath Camden Town, again in London, where we can see that the various lines loop around and over, over one another. So there's a whole series of flying junctions here in London. Central Railway Station and we can see a uh, train emerging from beneath a flying junction whilst another train goes across the flying junction. In Sydney the standard trains are eight carriages long and Many of them are double story trains, so the equivalent basically of 16 carriages on each train. So these two trains can pass one another without any possibility of collision. In the suburb of Adelaide, prior to the building of the flying junction, we can see at this point the line from the hills to the city is crossing the double tracks of the lines which go to Tonsley and to Seaford. You see this is a level crossing for motor cars and now looking towards the rail overpass for the tram which used to be a railway and the Gilbert station. If we exit out of Street View we actually get a view of the work being done to build the overpass at Goodwood.
standing room only in the train. Almost toppers. If there were six carriages on the train, then there'd be more room.